Hello everyone. First of all, thank you so much for clicking on this video, for watching. I'm going to ask you to stay all the way to the end as there's a lot of very important information that I'll be going over, okay? So today we're going to be talking about the three common misconceptions surrounding the tribulation and the rapture, okay? So the three common misconceptions um, are, number one, the tribulation is God's wrath. Okay, number two, we're going to talk about each one of these. Number two, we are not appointed to God's wrath. So we'll be raptured before the tribulation starts. Okay, number three, God will keep us from the hour of trial. So uh, we will be raptured before the tribulation starts. So these are the three, okay, uh, common misconceptions surrounding the tribulation and rapture. We'll break them down. All right, so before I continue, I'm gonna ask you to please kindly hit the like button, subscribe, hit the also notification button so that you're notified every time that I have a video so that you don't miss any video that we um, put up here on the channel. I gotta say that the um, algorithm really has held us back and they hold back videos like that, just Christian videos, so that um, it just gets a little bit tougher for us. So if you could go ahead and, and hit that, that really helps. It kind of forces the algorithm to push it through. And the other thing I would ask you is also to please share, okay? S share this information. If you were blessed, share it with somebody, okay? Uh, without further ado, let's continue. And I have my iPad here, so you'll see me going back and forth. All right, because it's just easier this way to continue to read the word of God here and then to talk to you in this other screen. OK, OK, so the first uh, book we're going to read is uh, Revelation. So real quick, the New Testament was written in Greek. The Old Testament was written in Hebrew, some verses and chapters in Aramaic, but mainly in uh, uh, Hebrew. Okay, so we're going to be looking at the uh, New Testament and the New Testament was written in Greek. All right, so we're going to be uh, with that in mind. We'll, we'll continue. We're going to be reading uh, Revelation chapter 6 verse 9 through 11. Okay, so Revelation chapter 6. Uh, this is the fifth seal. So remember there's there are seven seals. Okay, seven seals, seven trumpets, and then seven bowls of God's wrath. OK, throughout the uh, tribulation uh, period. OK, so we have uh, the first half of the tribulation that is called just a tribulation where um, the Antichrist comes with a false peace and there's uh, issues. And then he comes, uh, you know, in the, uh, as the man in the scene to kind of take care of all of the problems that the world is uh, facing. And so he comes with this uh, false peace. And then the second half of the tribulation period that is called the great tribulation okay that is when the persecution on the saints prophets apostles servants of god uh, come in full force and then um, that's when you see god's wrath coming on the ungodly and those who are persecuting his people in other words uh, the fifth we're going to look right now at the fifth seal so the fifth seal are christians who died and are asking God, saying, hey, how long must we wait until you avenge our blood, right? Verse 9 says this. When he opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the soul of those who had the souls of those who had been slain for the word of God and for the witness they had borne. They cried out with a loud voice, O sovereign Lord, holy and true, how long before you will judge and avenge our blood? and those who dwell on the earth. Then they were each given a white robe and told to rest a little longer until the number of their fellow servants and their brothers should be completed, uh, who were to be killed as they themselves had been. Okay, so there is a particular, uh, because God is all known, he's omniscient, so he knows that those that are going to uh, be martyred and those, you know, that are aren't. So not everybody will. OK, so God is basically telling them to rest a little longer. OK, remember, there are seven seals at the tribulation, although one can make a case that, oh, these ones that are that that died and that are not having asking God to kind of avenge their blood uh, to judge those that had done that to them. 
uh, were the ones before the tribulation and all that, and maybe up to that point. Okay, I can I can see that. But remember, this is the fifth seal. So there are going to be people in the tribulation that are going to die for God's word and for not for basically born, you know, uh, the name of Jesus and for uh, holding the truth and for not just kind of giving up on their belief. Okay, so there's that. All right. So they're asking Jesus when. How long, you know, should we wait? So, the again, the tribulation is God's wrath. Well, remember, that's a misconception number one. We're going to look right here. The tribulation is not God's wrath. The tribulation is basically the climax of the enemy coming and persecuting uh, the prophets, saints, and, and you know, God's people, basically the church, right? The, 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 the saints. Okay, so that's what they're uh, doing is that they're persecuting and then God's wrath is uh, in response to what they're doing to them. And then God starts judging them. Okay, so that kind of starts happening uh, at midpoint when, uh, you know, the seven year of tribulation you have the first three and a half years, which is just the, the bit tribulation, the, pretty much the great deception. And then the last three and a half years, which is the great tribulation. When the enemy comes full force, I mean, then God is like, okay, we're going to start, you know, his wrath starts. Okay, so then you have the seven uh, trumpet of uh, God, which is judgment upon those uh, who persecute them. And then also uh, the seven bowls of God's wrath. Okay, so uh, God's wrath is in response to what they're doing to um, his people. Revelation chapter 16, verse 4 through 7 is the third bowl of God's wrath, right? So then it starts because um, God uh, uh, starts judging them, okay? His wrath starts falling upon them. The third angel poured out his bowl into the river and the springs of water, and they became blood. And I heard an angel in charge of the water say, Just are you. O Holy One, who is and who was, for the, for you brought these judgments, for they have shed the blood of the saints and prophets, and you have given them blood to drink. It is what they deserve. And I heard the altar saying, Yes, Lord God, the Almighty, true and just are your judgments. Okay, so here is proof that God's judgment is coming because that they shed the blood of the saints and of the prophets, okay? So here's God's wrath in response to what they did. Revelation chapter 11, verse 15 through 18. This is the seventh trumpet, okay? Then the seventh angel blew his trumpet, and there were loud voices in heaven saying, The kingdom of the world has become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. And the twenty-four Elders who sat on the throne be, uh, before God fell on their faces and worshiped God, saying, We give uh, thanks to you, Lord God Almighty, who is and who was, for you have uh, taken your great power and began to reign. The nations raged, but your wrath came. And the time for the dead to be judged and for rewarding your servants and prophets and saints. And those who fear your name, both small and great, and for destroying the destroyer of the earth. Amen. So here again, you see that God's uh, avenging and he's coming with full force. Okay. So uh, we see here pretty much we can say that the, uh, the wrath of God is not the tribulation, right? It's in response to what they do to his prophets, uh, saints, okay, and um, apostles. All right, so the second uh, uh, common misconception surrounding the tribulation and rapture is we were not appointed to God's wrath. So we'll be raptured before the tribulation starts. Okay, so let's take a look at what Paul talks about this, okay? Again, we understand that midpoint, you know, that's when it starts getting really bad for uh, he's, uh, God's people. And then God starts to, right? Uh, come with the judgment so over here first uh thessalonians chapter 5 verse 1 through 11 i'm going to read 1 through 5 and then 9 through 11 you're welcome to read 
the entire the, the verses there. In fact, I encourage you to do so. Okay. So it says this. Now concerning the times and the season, brothers, times and season, right? Because nobody knows the exact day or hour of the rapture. Okay. Um, you have no need uh, to have anything written to you. Why? This is me saying why, right? For you yourselves are fully aware that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. While people are saying there is peace and security, then sudden, sudden destruction will come upon them as labor pain comes upon a pregnant woman as, and they will not escape. But you are not in darkness, brothers. So you are not in dar darkness, brothers, for that day to surprise you like a thief. But you are not in darkness, brothers, for that day to surprise you like a thief. So you will not be surprised because why? As he said in verse 1, right? Concerning the times and the season, you know this. For you are the children of the light, children of the day. We are not of the night or of darkness, right? So that's the reason why we know all this. Verse 9. For God has not destined us for wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us so that whether we are awake or asleep, we might live with him. Therefore, encourage one another with and build up um, one another, just as you are doing. Okay, so this is verse uh, 9 and 11. So here we see that verse 10, who died that, right? Uh, through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, so that whether we are awake or asleep, might live with him. So it doesn't matter if you're dead or alive, right? You live with him, right? And, and he also says, encourage one another with these words, right? As Paul usually does, uh, encouraging the church in Thessalonica, okay? Um, that we will be with him forever, no matter what uh, happens. Okay, so here we see that uh, uh, one of the mistakes that people make is seeing this, um, for God has not destined us for wrath. And they, they take that context and they say, well, then that means we're going to be rapture because God didn't, you know, destine us for, for his wrath. Well, amen, God didn't. God hasn't destined us for his wrath because God's wrath is reserved for those who are ungodly, for those that um, persecute the church, the, the saints, the prophets, and the apostles, right? During the tribulation. So he will avenge. Remember, in Revelation verse six, uh, chapter 6, God, in the, in the faith seal, of the ones that were martyred asked God, Hey, how long until we wait? God said, Hey, wait just a little bit longer until the ones, you know. So... God starts then judging them, right? And then his wrath starts coming and kind of responding the request to, hey, God, you know, you know, just judge them already, you know, give them a little bit of what they deserve type of thing, okay? Uh, Revelation chapter 9, verse 1 through 6. This is the uh, fifth uh, trumpet, okay? And uh, over here, uh, this is very, very important. We're going to see, it's another proof that uh, we were not part of uh, God's wrath, right? Because God's wrath is not reserved for us, right? Revelation chapter 9, verse 1. And the fifth angel blew his trumpet, and I saw a star falling from heaven to earth. And he was given the key to the shaft of of the bottomless pit he opened the shaft of the bottomless pit and from the shaft rose smoke like the smoke of a great furnace and the sun and the air were darkened with the smoke from the shaft then from the uh, smoke came locusts on the earth and they were given power like the power of scorpion of the earth they were told not to harm the grass of the earth or any green plant um, or any tree, but only those people, this is important, but only those people who do not have the seal of God on their forehead, okay? So they were, they were allowed to, um, they had the, they were given the power, like uh, scorpion-like, um, but they were told not to harm the grass of the earth, the green plants, or the trees, but only those uh, people who do not have the seal of God on their forehead, 
They were allowed to torment them for five months, but not to kill them. And their uh, torment was like the torment of scorpion when it stings someone. And in those days, people will seek death and will not find it. They will long to die, but death will flee from them. So imagine how bad this is. Like people are going to, uh, they're going to be so hurt or, you know, locusts are going to uh, give them so much pain that they're going to rather, you know, die than be alive. But they, they won't be able to. So you see here where it says, but only those people who do not have the seal of God on their forehead. So those are the ones that these locusts are going to be tormenting. Not you and I, right? Because we in Jesus' name, we'll have the seal of God. So again, here God allowing the, and we know that the fallen, uh, the the star that falls, the fallen is, is you know Satan himself who is given the key of the abyss, and and, and all this uh, starts happening. Um, but he he won't be allowed to touch us, right? And notice that it doesn't say exactly who these uh, ones that are sealed are. So. A lot of times people get confused by it. People think that it's the 144 uh, the Christian Jews. But over here, it doesn't say that it's them, right? It says in anybody who doesn't have. So basically, if you believe God, you, you follow Christ, and, and you're not willing to compromise uh, your belief in, in, in Christ, you know, uh, you'll have the seal. And also, uh, it's important for us to pray for God's mercy so that we do have this, the, the seal and the protection of God. So when God's wrath does come, it does not, uh, you know, touch us at all. Okay, kind of like what happened uh, with the Jewish, Jewish people during uh, God's wrath back in Egypt, right? When uh, God um, was setting his people free from uh, the uh, Egyptian. Okay. All right, so yes, uh, we were not appointed to God's wrath. Amen. But this has nothing to do with the, the rapture or taking us before it happened. In fact, you know, it's clearly stating that it won't touch those of us that, that are his prophets and, and saints and, and servants. Okay. All right. So, and that was uh, the second point. So the third uh, common misconception surrounding the rapture and the tribulation uh, is God will keep us from the hour of trial. So that must mean we'll be raptured before the tribulation starts. Right? Let's take a look at what the Bible says. Again, it doesn't matter what I feel, what I think, or what I heard. It's whatever the Bible says. Okay, guys, that's very important. Okay? In fact, um, it's important to read the Word of God with uh, the three um, and I like to call it the three indispensable methodology uh, to study the Word of God, okay? Uh, whatever topic that is. So you want to, number one, understand the context, okay? What is it saying? A lot of times we read too fast and we oversee vital information um, that's written there. Number two, compare it with other passages. What What else, you know, who, who who's talking about this? Do they complement each other? Okay, scripture reveals scripture. Okay, third is going back to the original language. So the the Old Testament, like I mentioned, was written in Hebrew, the New Testament in Greek. Okay, so we want to go back, and we always want to make sure we use that uh, three met methodology in order to understand fully what it's saying. Okay, God will keep us from the hour of trial, so we will be raptured before the tribulation starts. Well, let's take a look at what the Bible says. Okay. So here we have uh, a verse very widely used, um, and it's uh, Revelation chapter 3, verse 10 through 11. It says this, because you have kept my word about patient endurance. Again, patient endurance. So they're enduring something patiently, okay? Right. They have to endure something patiently, all right? What is that? Okay, um, because you have kept my word about patient endurance, I will keep you, I will keep you from the hour of trial that is coming on the whole world to try those who dwell on the earth. I am coming soon. Behold, hold fast what you have. Hold fast what you have so that no one may seize your crown. Amen. So here, 
people get confused by the word, I will keep you from, right? People uh, use that word to say, I will that, say that to hear what this means is rapture, rapture. This is a uh, revelation, therefore New Testament, New Testament, uh, and it was written in Greek, right? The original language in Greek, okay? The original language, uh, rapture uh, in Greek is called harpazo, okay? Not keep you from. The word keep you from here, the original word keep you from is that that is used here is called terio ek. Terio ek, and I have it here. Terio ek, the original Greek word used keep you from in this verse is terio ek. Terio ek means to keep, right? Uh, to watch, uh, preserve, right? And then guard, protect. Uh, in fact, the New Living Translation, which I'm not even using the New Living Translation, but the New Living Translation uses the word protect. Why? Because that's what it is, to protect, okay? So terio ek means to protect, all right? Now, this Greek word terio ek is the exact same word when Jesus was praying. Remember when Jesus was praying uh, to God to protect his disciples and to all those that believe in their word, right? That's the same word uh, God uses. So we're going to read that, okay? And it's in John chapter 17, verse 14 through 17, okay? Mm -hmm. Says this, I have given them your word. So this is um, Jesus praying, right, to God, right? Telling them that he has given the disciples uh, his word, God's word, okay? So I have given them your word, and the world has hated them because they are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. Remember, Matthew chapter 24, when uh, the disciples asked Jesus, so tell us, you know, Rabbi, when is the end of the ages? And, and when, what is the sign? When, you know, when is this all going to happen? So Jesus proceeds and tells them a whole bunch of things. One of the things Jesus tells them is this, and they will hate you and put you to death for my name's sake. Right? So who bores the name of Jesus? The Jews? Certainly not. The Jews crucified him. Because he said, you know, he was uh, God and he was a son of God, right? So the Jews doesn't even believe, they don't even believe uh, Jesus as the Messiah, unfortunately, right? The church, the, the, the servants, the saints, the apostles, the prophets are the ones who bore, right, the name uh, of Jesus, who believes in him, okay? So here's a kind of a, a connection here when he was praying to God, right? And then let's continue. I do not ask that you take them out of the world. I do not ask you that you take them out of the world, but that you keep them from the evil one. Okay, so here it is. So this word, I do not ask you that um, you take them out of the world, but that you keep them from, keep them from this. The word that's written here in the original Greek is the same word that's written in Revelation Chapter 3, verse 10, Terio Ek, that you keep them from, that you protect them from. Big thing here, huh? Big deal. So you will be protected and you won't be affected by God's wrath. Okay? Verse 18, let's continue. As you sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. And for their sake, I consecrate myself that they also may be sanctified in truth. And he continues, I do not ask for these only, right? For his disciples only, but also for those who will believe in me through their word, that they may all be one, just as you, Father, are in me, and I in you, that they also may be in us, so that, that the world may believe that you have sent me. Amen. And so here is the conclusion. God will keep us from the hour of trial. Amen. But that has nothing to do with us being rapture. Right? So over here, uh, we saw multiple verses. We saw, uh, we understood the context. We compared. We looked at the original language. And I hope that you were blessed by the uh, this reading of this word. 
by this passage. And um, again, if you haven't done so, I want to encourage you to please hit the like, subscribe, and then also the notification so that you are um, alarmed every time that we put up a new video. Okay, and um, please share. Like I said, the algorithm really, uh, you know, has been bad with uh, helping us uh, push uh, contents forward. And um, there's just a lot of information. I don't have time in this video to go through it all into all, all the details and the explanation. But, you know, I got to thank God for revealing things uh, to us, for revealing, for giving his word. And also, you know, for giving me the opportunity to write a book. So this is the book that I've written. Uh, when is the rapture of the church? Right. Uh, Phil Back Braga. You can find it at Amazon. You can purchase there by either finding my name, Phil Back Braga, or uh, by the title of the book. When is the rapture of the church? Um, of course, nobody knows the exact day or the hour, but uh, Jesus did teach us to uh, read the signs and uh, the timing so we know roughly when it's going to happen okay um i want to encourage you to, to go and take a look and i, I believe that you'll be uh, tremendously blessed by the reading of this uh, book and there's a lot of good information there um and i just want to say that i had a dream a few years ago and it was uh, in relations to attack on uh, home soil and we're entering in, in a very weird phase in the in the world today and um i'll put the uh, the link to it i believe it'll be let me think on this side here or this side camera but if you want to click on it go ahead click on it and it'll and it should take you there okay and it gives you more information of uh, what it was uh, that i dreamed about all right oh i almost forgot i also made another video uh, called the three key elements of the rapture it's a really good video. Um, I encourage you to go take a look. All you got to do is click here and uh, you'll be able to see the video. And I believe you'll be blessed with the contents. Okay. Thank you very much for watching up until this point. May God bless you, those around you, and your family. Until next time, take care.